Welcome back, it's me Lou. I'm here for another action figure unboxing and review, and today we are hopping into the time machine as we travel way, way back to the early 90s. And today we're going to feature this, the Wildcats Covert Action Team's Spartan Action Figure. Um, this was produced by Playmate Toys in conjunction with Wildstorm Productions and Nelvana Studios way back in 1994. So, um, uh, I already have this figure, um, Mint on Card. All right, so it's, it's long story short, I had this figure back in the day, Mint on Card, sold it maybe like 10 years ago. And then maybe three years ago, I really missed it. So I went down and hunted him down and I got him. And then all of a sudden, I realized that the bubble on this guy was like falling off. So then I kind of wanted a much more mintier one. So uh, um, I hunted down a mint one on eBay a few weeks ago. So I do have a nicer one than this. And since I have a nicer one, the nicer one's hanging proudly displayed on my wall. And I don't need two of them. So I'm just going to pop this guy open since I don't have this guy loose. So I figured I'd make a fun video. So way back in the day, I was a big fan of Jim Lee, um, famous comic book creator, artist. And after he left Marvel and X-Men, he jumped on board with Image Comics and they did Wildcats. Spartan was the field leader of the Wildcats team during the early 90s. A couple of years after the debut of the comic book, there was a cartoon series and then they released, um, Playmates released a line of toys to kind of coincide with that. And it's a great figure. I love the card art. We have uh, Spartan as he appeared in the comic book as drawn by Jim Lee. The figure looks fantastic. Multiple accessories, a trading card. Um, he's the Karubim cybernetic team leader. If you remember the, the comic book or the cartoon, um, Spartan was actually a cyborg. Or I think he was a completely synthetic being. I don't think he was human at all. And on the back, this was from Wave 1. So during Wave 1, the two villains we got were Hellspont and the Damon Knight. And then um, they gave us pretty much the entire team minus Voodoo. Um, they never made an Emp figure, but they did make a Voodoo one. And she came out later, I think in Wave 2. Um, nice meaty description about you know the world of the Wildcats. Uh, it's fantastic that they give you a bio card, much like a G.I. Joe character. And, man, this is a lot of reading. Uh, especially compared to, like, what they give us on toy packages nowadays. Nowadays, you'll be lucky if they just give you a one sentence describing the action figure. But over here, it's almost kind of like they gave you the entire biography, which is nice. Uh, they highlight all the different accessories. It comes with a battle damage arm. Um, he comes with an extra hand with his energy effect. Um, he comes with his communicator and a display base. Alright, so since this guy's bubble is already coming off, let's just take this guy out. <laughs> just like that, okay. And here's a, the display stand um, right here. It has the Wildcats logo. This thing came off pretty clean, so I might actually just keep it still. Um, I don't know why. All right, so let's take a look at Spartan. He comes with a trading card. Um, it's a Jim Lee trading card illustrated back in 1994. Now, I don't remember if this card was part of a larger set or if it was made specifically for the toys. Okay, yeah, so this was made specifically for the toys. It's weird here because on the card, it's strictly Jim Lee, but then on the back says art by Dan Norton and Jim Lee. So maybe Dan Norton colored it. So it's cool trading card. Um, it's nice that we get trading cards with some toys in the modern age, like uh, McFarlane gives us trading cards with the DC Multiverse. So that's a fun little freebie. And let's take a look at Spartan the leader of the Wildcats or the field leader. All right, so during the um, early 90s, the paint's kind of flaked away on his butt right there. So during the early 90s, um, 
Playmates, I think primary competition when it came to like superhero figures was probably Toy Biz. Uh, Toy Biz, they were dabbling in Marvel, X-Men, Fantastic Four, Spider-Man, Avengers. And their figures, they were, they were nice. Um, they initially started out as a smaller scale, but then they'd gradually increase the size of the figures, um, you know, as the line continu continued to grow. Uh, these figures were a little bit larger than the average Toy Biz figure during that time. This was before Toy Biz started dabbling in, like, the larger 5 and 6 inch figures. The one thing that I always felt that Playmates had over the Toy Biz stuff is that I always felt that the sculpting was, it, I mean, it was almost on the same level, but the proportions I thought were better. You know, this mimicked uh, Spartan a little bit better as in how he looked like in the comic books. Like some of the Toy Biz stuff, they looked like they were sculpted well by toy designers, but they didn't always reflect accurately how they appeared in the comic books. Uh, whereas this guy, I, th I always felt that the Playmates Wildcat stuff did a really good job of just mimicking, um, you know, how they appeared in the comics. Like the musculature was always well done. Uh, the, the likeness of the face was pretty awesome, and the detailing was great. You know, as you can see here, even though this is from, like, um, the mid-90s, it's a nice sculpted figure. The paint application is very minimal by today's standards, but for the most part, I think, you know, this guy in a static pose, he's, he's still a wonderful display piece. And here's some uh, up-close shot of his head. The sculpting on the hair, it's very basic for what we got in the 90s. You know, it's not like today where, where they're like sculpt like almost every strand of hair. His facial expression's all right. Um, he's kind of much more in an angry um, mood. I love the detail on his harness and belt. It looks great. He has the Wildcats logo on his belt buckle. Um, as you can see over time, the paint, I'm not sure if it's flaking off, but... Uh, white paint in general is generally pretty thick and chalky and as you can see here there's like some micro fractures in the paint that's not necessarily fractures in the plastic so the paints you know it's showing its age a little and it's not the clean white paints always chunky to begin with and it actually is starting to flake off a little bit so yeah it's starting to flake off as you can see But overall, it's a nice figure. Um, it looks like Spartan. You know, this clearly looks like the guy from the comic books. He has different accessories. For example, if you want to give him his hand with the energy effect, you just swap this one out. Swap this one in. And it's a cybernetic webbing. I don't rem remember what this was in the comic book. But there it goes. Um, it would have been nice if they just gave us a plain blue fist, you know, because, I don't know, I don't, I don't, it's weird that they gave us the energy fist. And if you want to give them the battle damaged arm, here it is. Um, it, as you can see, parts of his forearm on the costume was ripped off, revealing his armor plating and cybernetics underneath. And again, if you want to swap it out, pull it out. Snap it back in, and he kind of has like a damaged arm. It's kind of reminiscent almost of like, you know, Luke Skywalker and Jedi. So that's a nice accessory and play feature. Um, he also comes with a communicator right there. Yeah, so very, very, you know, decent figure. Um, big fan of this line of toys. I'm very, very nostalgic. I'm very, very nostalgic for the like toys from the '90s. I think they're great. You know, they can't hold a candle to like you know the stuff that's going on nowadays. Like toy engineering is so advanced. But for me, there's just something about the simplicity of this design and the way the figures were made that it, it, I don't know. They feel like toys. You know, they feel like they're meant to be played with. But with a toy like this, it doesn't. It's it strikes a nice balance. You know, it it's, it's produced well enough where it it makes for a great display piece but at the same time if you're a child you know there's enough articulation here and a decent sized figure that it makes a, a great play toy so i think with you know these 
older Wildcat figures, they, they hit a nice balance of being a good toy, but also being a good collectible. So yeah, I love this figure a lot. And since we're on the subject of Wildcats, I, th I thought I'd take this out. Um, so this is um, an Ashcan comic book. And for those of you who don't know what an Ashcan is, I don't think they even do this anymore. Um, so way back in the day, um, before a comic went to like full production and went to the presses, they would always kind of produce like, it's almost like an artist proof. Um, you know, in, in this case, like Wildstorm Studios or um, back in the day when they're uh, homage studios or homage comics, you know, they produce these small little like ash cans. They'd call them ash cans, but they're kind of like mini comics. And it'd be like an artist proof just to see for themselves like how the comic would print out. You know, they would want to see like how the line work would look and the lettering. And, you know, overall, it was kind of for them a preview of what the, you know, the finished product like would, would look like minus color. And then I bought this at one of the larger um, uh, Chicago comic book shows in the 90s. And I bought it directly from um, Homage Studios directly. And back in the day, you know, it was... Uh, who was it? It was Jim Lee, Wills Portacio, Scott Williams, uh, Mark Silvestri was there for a while. Um, who else was there? It's a couple of other artists as well. Uh, but those were the, the big heavy hitters of the studio. And I believe I bought this before Wildcats 1 hit the stands. It was almost like a preview before the book went public. So if you were lucky enough to attend, I think it was Chicago Comic Con back in the day before Wizard World bought it out. And this was at the Ramada Inn O'Hare um, Hotel, I think. So, you know, uh, during their meet and greet where you get your book signed and, you know, chat with the artists and buy their artwork, they were also selling some of their merch. And this is one of the pieces I picked up when I was younger. I was probably 15 or 16 at the time, and I loved these Ashcan comic books. Uh, for the longest time, my life dream was just to be a comic book artist. And I love these books because it... It's awesome because for me as an artist, it'd give me like uh, insight into like how Jim Lee or Scott Williams drew their artwork, especially in black and white. Granted, this was reproduced, I think maybe down to like 34% of the original size. Um, it's still for me, it, it, there's no better classroom than, you know, experience. And when you get to see like how other people create artwork, or, you know, close to what the finished result looks like, you know, it's it's so insightful. You know, there's so much to draw from it. And for me as a kid growing up, you know, it's just fantastic to be able to see their artwork in black and white and, and, and to be printed out so cleanly too. Because uh, back then, comic books um, were primarily printed on newsprint. But image comics, they kind of set the bar to a higher standard because they printed their comic books on uh, better stock. And they were also the first ones, um, Rob Liefeld and his studio specifically were some of the first artists to like um, dabble in like digital coloring. So, you know, Image Comics, they really set the bar high in terms of comic book production and the quality that you'd receive. And for me, just being able to handle one of these ash cans and see with the black and white artwork, you know, close to like raw form was just amazing. Like... I don't know, Jim Lee's a great artist, but I'm very, very fond of his work from the late 80s and early 90s. I think for me, that's when he really hit his peak. Like, everyone loves, like, Batman and Hush, but I don't know. Some of his earlier stuff, I think, is just phenomenal. So, yeah, this is great. This is Wildcats 1, uh, but in ash can form. And here's Spartan over here. A nice close-up. And then he's in the hangar bay checking out the new their new jet. Great, great comic. This brings back so many memories. And I remember this was this ash can was awesome also because there was a, like a, a preview of uh, Will Spartacio's Wetworks like near the last page. And it was kind of like this splash page. And this looked awesome also. Uh, Will Spartacio was like one of my favorite artists as a kid growing up. I loved his early work. You know, Wetworks I thought was, you know, much like Jim Lee, I felt that his... In terms of his best pieces, I always loved the stuff he produced in the late 80s and early 90s. So yeah, this is... Man, I'm so I'm so fond of this era. I love comic books. And here's a nice um, 
a splash of the Wildcats team. You have Voodoo, you have Maul, Warblades, Spartan. This was the earlier design of Spartan because he had the chains um, over his arms and shoulders. And he had a different Wildcats logo uh, emblem um, over his chest. Uh, here's um, Zealot, Grifter, and Amp, and Void. And then here was a sneak preview for um, Death Blow, Hand of God. And this was published in Darker Image, which was an anthology book. Yeah, so that's your Wildcats history lesson for today. Great action figure, great memories, great comic book. So let's wrap this up. Once again, my name is Lou. If you're new to my channel, welcome. If you are a returning subscriber or viewer, thank you so much for continued likes, comments, and support. I greatly appreciate it. So until the next video, be safe. Take care of yourself. Buy lots of toys. And most importantly, be happy. And I'll see you at the next one. All right, later.